by faith in Jesus. Holy I am, he's my redeemer, righteous. Holy, justified, safe, healthy and wealthy. Not by any good works, but by faith in Jesus who died for me. You see, what people never read is the new covenant arrangement. The new covenant arrangement, it is so frightening to religious people. <laughs> they don't want to preach it. Greetings friends and welcome to Revelation and Power. Always a joy to be able to minister the Word of God to you. And today we have some very, very important and special information for you. Beloved, let me just start by saying, <clears throat> by reiterating this. God loves you with an everlasting love. He loved us, he loved the human race so much that he gave his son Jesus. In Corinthians it said that he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us that we can be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God loves us with an everlasting love. God's love for us cannot change, will never change. I want you to know that today. You know, I know based on what you heard from church and religion, most times you felt that, well, God will love you if conditionally. Well, that was so under the old covenant. But in the new covenant, God's love is unconditional. Under the Old Covenant, God promised that, listen, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25, He promised that if they keep the law, it shall be to them for righteousness. And then in Deuteronomy 28, He said, all these blessings will come on them if they do right. Well, the problem is, nobody can keep the law. But so God promised in Jeremiah chapter 31, you must read the Bible for yourself. My dear friend, what happened initially? The people who brought religion to us, the Caucasians, and when they brought it, especially the colored people, their intention was not to get your soul saved. Their intention was to get the slaves to behave right. Because you can, you can control them if you, put, if you trick them with religion. And that's what they did. And so the intent, they told them if you do wrong, you will go to hell. But they never showed them the Bible. They never showed them God's promises. On. They never showed them that. And our four parents did not read it for themselves. So they went to church and they said, pass, pass and preach. And whatever he preached, they believed and they accepted. And nobody examined it. Not only that, but the other person that after that, the, the next generation that came, and even when people of color became ministers, rather than examine the word for themselves, they bought into the system that the people who gave the book, gave the religion, left. And they never investigated and said, let us examine the scripture and see what it says. So rather than examine it, they established Bible schools and all that. So when you go to Bible school, you, 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 let me, could I shock you? You don't go to Bible school, you learn the Bible. When you go to Bible school, you don't learn the Bible. You learn how to run the system they've left. That's what Bible schools teach. They don't teach you to interpret the Bible and teach you Bible. That's not what they learn. You, you would think when you go to Bible school, you would have gone through the whole Bible. No, 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 no. Teach you church systems and all. That's what you're taught in Bible school. So, people don't have time, the ministers don't have time to investigate the word for themselves. So when a minister studies, he's studying for a scripture to preach. That's what happens. He has to preach on Sunday, so he takes time off to get a scripture, and he preaches. And guess what he preaches? What is in his subconscious was being oriented by the slave master, the person who introduced religion. He did not examine this word himself and have a commission from God and say, why you deliver this? So we preach all manner of things. We need to hear the word for ourselves. There's the old covenant. Let me explain something to you, my dear friend. There's the old covenant. Covenant. The Mosaic covenant. Which the people broke. There's 
Israelites, those who came out of Egypt, they broke the covenant. As a matter of fact, God had just given it to them, and then they broke it. Moses went up back because he said to Moses, go and tell God we'll keep it. They went up to the right? Moses went up back. God said, go down, they've corrupted themselves. They already made a golden calf, already going to idolatry. So God said in Jeremiah chapter 31, I'm going to make a new covenant. Now God got to be out of his mind to make the same covenant, covenant that he made with the children of Israel. To make the covenant with us. Can't make the covenant. It's impossible because they couldn't keep it. I mean, they saw the Red Sea part, you know. These people saw the Red Sea part. At this time, I bring in my colleague, Bishop. These people saw the Red Sea part. Yes, they did. They saw all the miracles in Egypt. Mm -hmm. They saw the firstborn die, the Egyptian firstborn, theirs lived. They saw water come from a rock. Mm -hmm. They saw all these supernatural things. They saw the pillar of cloud by day. And the pillar of fire by night. Yes. They witnessed that. But they broke the covenant still. Now God has to be, something has to be wrong with God to make the same agreement with us. Now there are those who say, he, he, what he does, no, he puts it to your heart. That, no, no, nothing is wrong with God. Because he didn't make the same agreement. I have, thank you. <laughs> God knows that don't make sense. We couldn't keep it. So he said, I'll make a new covenant. Not according to that one which your fathers could not keep. Though I showed them my miracles, I was a father to them. They broke it. They broke it. So under the old covenant, it was all the thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not. And you had to obey that. Mm -hmm. Under the new covenant, God said, I will, I will, I will. In other words, God says, I'm not asking you to do anything. I will do these things. Wonderful. So God chose to love us. Um... Recently, you know, I've been paying some interest to, to people who the Hebrews and, or Israelites in the diaspora. And I've been following, following it up. I even noticed that in Nigeria, they discovered a group, a group of people of Jews. And um, they even examined the DNA and discovered they're Jews in truth. Mm -hmm. Black people. People of color, like us. And I'm convinced, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that the people came out of Egypt were colored people. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it makes no... I mean, Moses thought he could hire a colored, a white boy in a colored country. It's mm -hmm. not possible. And so I believe it's people of color. I yes. believe that all my heart. Yes. And I believe all that happened to our parents and all of that, or for parents in the slave trade, is what Deuteronomy spoke about. I believe that. Oh, wow. How Isaiah prophesied what mm -hmm. happened to them, mm -hmm. where they be about talks and all. So I believe that. The problem, however, the same Old Testament, the same, because some people feel that oh, the New Testament writings are not true. Some people say that, um, you know, they are misleading with the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Well, the same Old Testament has some prophetic things yes. concerning Jesus. Yes. That you can't remember. In the Old Testament, he said, I make a new covenant. That Jeremiah new 31. Covenant, Jeremiah 31. So, therefore, every covenant has to have different new terms of yes. agreement. Yes. A covenant is an agreement, and there are conditions to be met. If we make a covenant, there must be some conditions. Yes. I can say, like, in the old days, you find two nations make a covenant and say, listen, you plant, we'll protect you. Yes. You will never see us go hungry. We'll never allow another nation to yes. overrun you. Mm -hmm. We cut the covenant, and we agree that that will be so. So as long as you have food, my people will be fed. As long as, if you're, if you're ever attacked, we will lay down our lives to protect mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. As long as that is not violated. Now, let's say you have food, and... You refuse to give us. I didn't give us. And you've broken the covenant. Yes. So God says, I make a new covenant. But then this one here, I'm not asking you to keep anything. Mm. Because God said, I recognize you can't keep anything. Yes. <laughs> you see? So yeah. God, God, I'm not asking you to keep no covenant. Yeah. Because you are probably keeping covenant. Your fathers, I gave them, they couldn't keep it. So this new covenant, 
I'm going to set a condition. Wonderful. So God said, I will love you unconditionally. Wonderful. That's the new covenant. That's the new covenant. Now, and sometimes it disturbs me, sometimes I'm, I, sometimes I'm disturbed, sometimes I, I sympathize with them. So I become angry with these preachers. Sometimes I'm, I, I'm sorry for them. Who shouting about how God will do this and do that to people. The persons who are redeemed, Bishop, the persons who have received Christ as their Savior, God promised. This was a shock. The Christ, Christianism and the Christ, Christendom as they know it. God promised that he will never, ever be angry with them. Yes. Are That's you the promise in Isaiah 54. I am the redeemer. That's what we're going to read. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 54. And there is not a minister alive who can tell me this prophecy is not concerning the church. He cannot deny it, but we need to read it. It's verse 9. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. What that means? Uh, God is calling the experience of the flood of the whole, whole earth back to the memory. Yes. This is the waters of Noah, the time when the earth was flooded. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, he is making an analogy or he's making a comparison. Mm -hmm. He said, remember the waters of Noah? Remember yes. when this happened? He said, this is like that unto me. Uh, for as I have sworn, because God swore to Noah, That's right. that he will never drown the earth again. That's correct. I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. There will never be another flood. So have I sworn that I will not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. This is like the waters of Noah for me. I'm reading the easy English. Then I promised that I, the waters of Noah shall never again cover the earth. So now I have promised not to be angry with you. I will not punish you again. God said he will not be what? He will not punish you again. He and he will not, not be angry with you. No, no. I wonder if God was saying, as long as you don't do certain things. <laughs> well, the condition for the waters of Noah God swear you will never again flood the earth. And so the understanding is, no matter what the state of the earth... You got it. God you got it right flooded. <laughs> God has promised. And so, no matter what your state is, uh, once you've been redeemed, I'll never be angry with you, never rebuke you, never punish you. That's, that's the promise. Because God didn't say to Noah, as long as they didn't do these things that I uh -huh. drunk the world for. That's right. He's here God promised. He said, I'll never do this again. Yes. See, he said, as I swore to Noah. Mm -hmm. Now, there was no condition. That's right. To say, look, from now on, you all live right. That's right. That's or right. I will, so I will, won't have to do this mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. God said, I will never do it. In other That's words, right. I don't care what you do, I wouldn't do this. That's correct. And God is making a parallel. Mm -hmm. And he's comparing it. He said, listen, as I promised Noah, I am promising you. Hallelujah. That I will never be angry with you again. <laughs> this is what I'm transition I'm going to read now. Uh, this is the International Standard Version. For this, like the waters of Noah to me, then I swore that the waters of Noah would never again spread over the earth. So have I sworn that I wouldn't be angry with you again and that I won't rebuke you. What? Yeah, I swear. No, if well, God will be angry, people will send him to hell. Uh, uh, the church does not know this scripture. The church knows repent or judgment. They don't know once you're redeemed, God has promised he will never be angry with you again, <laughs> will never punish you. Ken says, for the mountains may collapse and the hills may reel, but my gracious love will not depart from you. Neither will my covenant of peace totter, says the Lord, who has compassion. <laughs> Lord said, my covenant of peace. This is what we are enjoying. Yes. The covenant of peace. Moses' covenant was not a covenant of peace. Mercy the Lord, it was one of death. That's right. The Lord brought death. The, Lord, the word says that. It, this is what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. He said, my covenant of peace. What, what peace? Now, 
be a reconciliation between us and our Father. Mm -hmm. He said, this covenant will not, it will not, talk. God said it would even. That's right. In other words, it's not it won't be broken. God said it would even make a shake. Unshakable. You understand, God said it has been established. Mm -hmm. It will not, it will never. Forever settled. And ever God says. And guess why, my, my bishop? Because God did not give us conditions to keep it. Mm -hmm. You follow? Yes. Because once God put conditions in, it's going to torture. Oh, yes. Because God will have to say, I kept my part. Mm -hmm. No, you did not keep your, your part. And the problem with, with human beings, they can't keep no covenant. <laughs> human beings can't keep covenant. <laughs> Mm. We are covenant breakers. <laughs> the peculiar thing is people admit that you know as a you're a human, so you will feel. <laughs> they admit that. They admit the it. most pious, the most religious, the most sanctimonious, they admit that. And yet they go down the road to tell you that if you do so and so, this will happen. Now some of you know why why you want the people to know the scripture? And this is not for those who in the church, it's for some of those in the church who will hear it. But for those persons who will not come to God, All right. will not come to the Lord, because they feel, brother, I can't make this thing, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I, I am not ready. Yes. So rather than accept the gift of salvation which God has offered to yes. his son, believe that he died for them and accept the gift of salvation, then say, because what they heard is you got to do come to church yes. and do right. You got to have certain works, righteous works. And men say, I can't make it. I tried, but I tried. I, I. And before I go and take, well, hear what men say. I prefer not to come to God. Mm -hmm. Then come to God and mess up. <laughs> because I believe God will beat me bad. <laughs> and then they hear the scripture. He that put his hand to the floor and pulls it back is not fit for the masters. So all those scriptures here, yes. and you said, no, no, I'm not coming. Let me drink my rum. Let me do whatever I want to do. Yes. With you. I, I, don't worry me in this God thing. Rather hearing, God loves you unconditionally. Hallelujah. And here God says, you believe my son died for you? Listen, I would never be angry with you again. That's a powerful scripture. Oh, that's very, it's very frightening. powerful. <laughs> in other words, you say, I don't care what you're doing with you. This, the, <laughs> unfortunately for the church, they have not been taught to believe this. So preachers keep preaching. Don't worry what they're saying. God's going to get you. But what we will do, what will you do with the scripture? Mm. I mean, hold on. Mm -hmm. What can you do with the scripture? Will you tell me that he's not the Holy One of Israel? No, will you tell me that? He is not the one who saved us can't and our redeemer. Can't you can't sell me that. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have to conclude this scripture is applicable to this new covenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you see, what people never read is the new covenant arrangement. The new covenant arrangement, it is so frightening to religious people. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to preach it. Look at Romans, the book of Romans. The new covenant arrangement is frightening to religious people. Romans chapter 4. Don't like, you see, you know, this is what some people do. They will go and find a scripture where God says he's going to punish you. Yes. In the Old Testament. Yes. And will fail to realize God promised in the new covenant. Romans chapter 4, mm. verse 3. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now to someone who works, wages are not considered a gift but an obligation. If you work, it's not a gift. You're obligated, they gotta pay you. Mm -hmm. You earned it. Mm -hmm. However, to someone who does not work but simply believes in the one who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. This is what this this is where this is where the devil telling people you have to work. And you know. I've heard people try to spin it around, dress it up. It's either works or grace. Mm -hmm. They say, we know we're not saved by works. But if you're saved, then you have to do right. Yes. 
So I, I asked, the, I'm going to ask the final question. If I don't do right, what? <laughs> answer me that question. Look at me now and answer me. If I don't do right, what does the scripture say God will do with me? I believe Christ died for me, but I don't do right. Tell me what God will do with me. You answer, go on television and answer that question. To let the whole of Ghana hear, the whole world hear it. What will God do with the person who believes that Christ died but does not do right? Guess who heard the answer it? As long as you believe, you will do right. When you answer like that, no, I'm going to pull out my favorite word and I'm going to call him hypocrite. Because that person who says that is advocating that they do right all the time. All the time, correct. You understand? Correct, correct. If you, tell, if that, if you answer that way, then I'll say to you, I'll ask you the question, do you do right all the time? Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can look at me and say, well, yes. <laughs> and if you say no, well, then how are you using that analogy? Mm -hmm. You can't use it. Yeah. Likewise, David speaks also of the blessedness of the person. Bishop, this gets frightening. This year when you read the scripture, it, it, I believe some religious zealots are angry with the scriptures here, but it's right there. <laughs> I know the thing they can't do with us, Bishop. We read Bible, you know. Yes. No, we don't go and pitch fire and brimstone and holler down. We read the Bible. Yes, sir. And we are pointing people that can go in the Bible and see what That's we say. That's correct, Your Holiness. We re read in Romans chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Likewise, David also speaks to the blessing of the person whom God regards as righteous apart from actions. Mm -hmm. This is, I mean, international standard board. Yes. Regards him as righteous apart from the actions. Mm -hmm. Like Abraham. Abraham just believed God and God said, the righteous Abraham. That's correct. But, um... Abraham was martyr to Sarah, then he went into Hagar, then he had concubines. Mm -hmm. God said, you're so righteous. That's correct. That's, 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 God said, you're righteous that's what because God you says. believe me. Yes. Now, Abraham is the precedent yes. by which God called people righteous. That's correct. Like that's the, the word of God belief. says that, yes. Okay. Now, here David goes, right. Likewise, David also speaks of the rest of the person whom God regards righteous apart from actions. Verse 7. How blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. That's what God does. Forgive your iniquities and he covers your sin. <laughs> He's going, people will go and dig them up and so uh, God said, I cover them. Mm -hmm. Now, it's going to get, out of white friend used to say, it's going to get good. <laughs> Eight. How blessed is the person whose sins the Lord will never charge against him? The King James says, of whose sins the Lord will take no account. Yes. This throws you right back to Isaiah 54. I will never, uh, as God uses the word. And you see, people thinking of the righteousness of God and the holiness of God, and God has to judge sin. Yes, my dear friend. <laughs> yes, my dear scribe or Pharisees. He has to judge, and he judges in his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's a simple deal. Amen. He who knew no sin was made to be sin. That's right. So God, this holy God that must just sin, punished his son. Yes. Once and for all, for all humanity. For all humanity. Once and for all. So all we have to preach now is how much God loves you. And to tell people, oh, God loves you. And the person will make the excuse and say, brother, I can't make it, you know, because I got certain, I have certain little things in my life, you know. I can say to them, my dear brother, don't we all? <laughs> but God loves us so much that he punished all the wrongdoings we did or our father Adam did or we would ever do they were punished in Christ once and for all so as it is God can never take an account of any wrong thing you do am I right you are correct that's the is word that scripture? of God that's the scripture if that is the gospel why won't people tell people that They've been deceived by the enemy. What good news is this to somebody who's sitting and saying, oh, hold on. Yeah. God won't punish those things I'm doing. Some men sitting there and saying, is this thing true? <laughs> Praise God it is. Praise God it is true. That is the word of God. See, they heard those men shouting and screaming, oh, God mm -hmm. will punish them so much that they believe it. Mm -hmm. This is the Bible. I mean the word. David says, there's a, who God will not take any account, and God cannot. If, God forbid, a believer goes out and murders somebody, 
A man go rape and kill somebody. He's a believer. Mm. God forbid that. But let the law of the land will deal with the man. Oh, yes. The law of the land. Because this is not arrangement, not with the law of the land. That's correct. It's with God. That's correct. We'll deal with the man. If we had, uh, if we had a law by which we execute people, the person can be executed. Yes. But the soul is saved. That's the word of God. As long as he believes Christ died for him, his soul is saved. Mm -hmm. You understand? If somebody does something that is atrocious and they have to be punished for it, that's all right. But their soul will be saved. Yes. Their soul, yes. The, Go ahead. the Lord will never charge the sins against them. He cannot charge mm -hmm. it because it was already charged. That's right. To Jesus, somebody was already punished for the sin and, and and most people understand that that if one is punished for the guilty then the guilty is set free and, and that's the cut transaction at calvary you know let me travel you can't go anywhere you stay in hotels you have to stay on your own or sometimes if i'm invited out I mean, whichever country I go, put me at the hotel. The hotel takes a card and they swipe it through the machine. They put the minister's card, swipe it through the machine. Whatever I eat, drink, order, is already, that card covers it. Covers it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. So I cannot go in debt. Yes. The man's card covers it. Yes. So all the hotel is doing is keeping tabs on whatever you use, mm -hmm. whatever they, they mm -hmm. keep of it. Mm -hmm. And unless the man's card, I, you go over, you exceed this limit of the card, then they'll call him and say, this card has been exceeded. Yes. The money that you have. But other than that, I don't have to worry that when I, I left there, I ordered a steak, I ordered this, mm -hmm. and they're sending a bill to me. You can't send a bill to me. That's right. They took a card, they, they, they put, that was against it. Likewise, when Jesus went to Calvary, he said, anything they do, charge it to me. Yes. <laughs> I charge made, that to my account. <laughs> charge my account. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have made a deposit. Charge it to my account. Yes. And what Jesus deposited in his blood was enough to cover the human race for hundred lifetimes. Hallelujah. As the Son of God died. Mm -hmm. Now, it is such an affront. Rather than men lift up the work of the cross ah, to see yes. how powerful it is. Yes. That they can pull it down by telling people that it cannot cover your sin. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I can cry when I hear ministers say this. Yes. How can you say that? How can you belittle, belittle the blood of Jesus Christ that tell him that by telling persons you will go to hell if you don't stop doing this and stop doing this? When the deposit of Calvary yes, was, awesome. was so awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That he cannot, he is not, a, nobody is able to exhaust it. Yes. Do you belittle the blood of Jesus? Yes, sir. They treat it as a common thing. Yes, Your Holiness. As if it was the blood of bulls and goats. I think people don't understand who Jesus was and the magnitude of what Calvary was. Amen. I agree with that. If you do, you can't preach this rubbish That's and correct. shouting and telling people you'll go to hell and, and God will judge the church. No, you can't say that. That's correct. You gotta remind people of God's promise. Yes. And say, God love you. You know, my brother, listen. So tell somebody, listen. Drive carefully. Don't exceed the speed limit. Because if you do, there might be somebody on the ring with the, the, the radar gun and give you a ticket. Yes. That don't change your salvation. That's correct. You've broken a lot and all of the land. That's all right. Now let me give you a ticket. You have to pay it. You, you infringe a certain country, they infringe a little bit too much, they say, well, you take your license or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is, as long as you keep believing Christ died for you, you are saved forever. You are saved forever. There's nothing a human being can do mm -hmm. that can take away salvation. That's the word. No, he can't do anything. There is no act he could commit. So when you have a woman living in a common law relationship. And the church says to her, you are not worthy because you are not married and you live in a common law relationship. 
It is erroneous. It's not true. That's correct. It's devilish. It's as strong as that. It is devilish. Because the woman who turned me is not in the cross. It's not in the, I'm redeemed because Christ, God loved me and gave his son for me. Amen. Her confidence now is if I don't get married. Yes, yes. You know, women, women harass it. Some women live with a, with a man. They have children for them. They live, the, the man treat them well. They're living happy, everything. And they go to church. Hmm. And this demonic thing, the, the devil used the minister. I, ain't call, I wouldn't call it minister devil, but the devil used the minister mm -hmm. to drive into in sin that woman's head. That she's living in sin, and if she die, yes. And the fear comes in that woman's That's heart. That's correct. She goes home, begin to torment that man. Mm -hmm. She won't get married, or she's gonna move out, or she will live and she stop giving him sex. What's wrong with your crazy self? You were that crazy man. Who does he ever use? You won't give the man sex. You're out of your mind. You never you need the sparrows on no money, no love. No love, no money to. <laughs> <laughs> but but you see, because it's a fear. Yes. Rather means to say, listen, God loves you. My you, God loves you, he died for you. You know, uh, uh, you want to get married, and so we'll pray that one day if God will speak to my heart and all that. But don't harass the man. No, sir. They got to preach no, on sir. fornication. Oh, yes, sir. And adultery. Yes, and sir. And they got to preach on it and beat people. Oh, yes. And if she doesn't leave that, she's either going to be demoted or put out of the church. But she knows she won't get any appointment, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. She's not going to get any appointment. Mm -hmm. if, they, if they don't know, and then they discover and she had some position, she's immediately she's removed. Yes, sir. Because she's a sinner. Mm -hmm. What makes her a sinner? We're born in sin. <laughs> you know, you remind me of the woman who they brought to Jesus. They said, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. And Moses commanded that she should be stoned. What do you say? And Jesus said, let the one who doesn't have any sin, <laughs> let the one who is without sin, tell the first stone. <laughs> I wonder how to catch her, you know. <laughs> Everybody peeping. Yeah, everybody peeping. <laughs> how did they catch her? <laughs> they hypocrites. Yes, sir. <laughs> they caught her. Yeah, I know a story of a, of, a, of a group person who go hide in a bush to catch a minister. Um, in a contrary way, they hide it themselves and think, go in and catch the man and everything. And they glorify themselves. God, we caught him. <laughs> and then they draw all them suckers who catch him. They're in the same boat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. White people can't wake up and say, hey, the devil used us for a long time. Oh, go ahead. I, I refuse to let the devil use us. Go ahead, your holiness. Me. I'm going to talk about the love of Jesus Christ. I'm going to talk about the love of God. I'm going to talk about it from the house. I'm going to shout to my congregation. They will know it. They will believe in this God that loved them. Amen. Wonderful. Rather than that, people are afraid because if I don't do right, this God is going to get me. Mm -hmm. it, it destroys the people's confidence in God. God wants us to have confidence in Him. God wants us to... People don't love God, love God you know. They're afraid. Mm -hmm. People are afraid of hell. They don't love God, they're afraid of hell. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not afraid of it. I can't go to hell. Amen. I, I can't go to hell. I can go to hell. <laughs> Christ's been there for me. That's correct. God is not a, God can't change his mind. That's right. The, the covenant is written in his blood and the blood of his son. That can't be changed. Impossible. It's impossible. God is not a man that he can lie. That's right. God can't wake up one morning and say, no, I shouldn't make this agreement. You know, I make, it, I make this agreement and some people doing their own thing. God can't do that. <laughs> Praise God, he can't. He cannot do that. <laughs> Praise God. And he got some people going to put me on lie on God and say, well, you know, yes. God is going to do so. How? God said you will never be angry. What you will do with that scripture? What will you do with Isaiah 54? Mm. I mean, you go into church, ask your pastor what to do with Isaiah 54, verse 9. Ask them what to do with it. <laughs> say, is this the word of God? Ask them what to do with Romans chapter 4, verse 6, 7, and 8. I said, what would you do with the scriptures? Mm -hmm. Ask them. 
So these two men, we, we don't know anything, or we are trying to lead people astray. I want you to ask them, write them down and ask them, explain these scriptures to me. Ask that pastor that is breathing fire about who going to hell. I say, please explain these scriptures to me. Explain it. <laughs> Can't tell me not the Bible. You know, I remember in Nigeria, I'm in Nigeria. When in this church, and they have written a big in the church, the wages of sin is death. And I saw the scripture. I felt angry in my spirit. But then I said, Lord, it's the word. Why am I angry? I shouldn't be angry with the word. So it's something wrong with me. And the Spirit of God said, no. The gift of God is eternal life. They didn't write that. Sin, God said, people are sin conscious. Yeah, sin focused. Mm -hmm. Sin like that. Mm -hmm. So they're not focusing on the righteousness uh, he gave them. Uh, the gift of God. The gift of God mm -hmm. is eternal life. That's insignificant. That's played down. Yes. Magnify the sin. And there's the devil. Mm -hmm. the, it's devilish. Magnify the sin. Mm -hmm. Preach on the sin. Mm -hmm. Rather than saying, oh, God loves us so much. Oh, hallelujah. God loves you so much. Oh, God. So people, what they do, it happens what people do, not, not on what God did. Yeah, God sent me to preach on what he did. Hallelujah. That's what people doing. Glory to God. You like that, Bishop? I Give do. me a high five, man. <laughs> We're going to preach on what Christ did. Amen. And not on what people do. That's correct. But we all in the whole... Talking about being in the hole doesn't help us. There's a way out. Hallelujah. That's what we want. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He's the one who died to save us. Yes, sir. So here people rant and rave and go on about what, uh, how people doing this and people doing that and people living this and people living that. Could you please stop a while and say, hmm. let me tell you what Jesus did. Ah, hallelujah. Glory to God. But you know eyes. what? Most people don't know. Yes, true. Everybody ought to know. They sing that song. What do Jesus says? Most preachers don't know. They don't know. Don't know who Jesus is. Because they never stopped. Just they got it from the four mm -hmm. fathers. They got it from the white mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. White man had no, the Caucasian had no interest in us really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, when they came down, a few of them may have had good hearts after a while. You know, they may have had a soft heart. Or, but preachers. But basically, they were paid by the, by the plantation owners to come in. So their message was primarily to keep the slave docile. To keep the slave docile. <laughs> because they were told, you know, the, the, the commandment said, thou shalt not kill. Yes. And if you kill, you're going straight to hell. Yes. And they magnify hell. Oh, yes. So when they rape the children, rape the wife, castrate the men and what kind of thing to them, nobody said, you said, because you got a religious genie, you need mm -hmm. God genie. You say, but I don't want to go to hell. So leave it alone. Let God deal with it. That's what happened, you know. That's exactly what took place. Now, the same spirit came down. So people now don't want to say, and it's a spirit of control. It's if I tell a man Christ died for him and God love you, in spite of what God loves, love you. <laughs> man of God, when a man shows up at church, he's not show up showing up because of fear. He's not coming to God from fear. That's right. He's coming to God who loves him. Yes, sir. Now, when I preach about hell, and you can go to hell if you don't turn, and you don't change. And people run out because of fear. They run into God, you know. They run away from hell. God wants you to run to him because Amen. you know what you love. This way, Amen. God loves me so bad for truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you mean God? <laughs> Let me go find more, but it's God that loves me so bad. Amen, much. amen. I mean, me, mm -hmm. in spite of me. In spite of. He still love me. Yes, sir. And I want no more, but this God loves yes. me so bad. That's the God of all grace. In spite of what you've done, once you believe in Jesus, He says, completely forgiven all but, sin. But if I preach hell <coughs> and I magnify hell and tell, oh, hell is terrible and all of that, people run. And you say, the only place you can run is in church. So people run into church. I hear ministers say things like, tonight, after three times, I'm going to close the door so you can't come in. <laughs> you never hear the preachers? One, I still have it open for a little while. Two, <laughs> no time you close the door. <laughs> the 
God. Run! <laughs> you run down now to the altar. Yes, yes. Because this preacher said, Fear, you, he's yes, gonna close your, yes. Fear based behavior. Yes. He's going to close the door. Yes. They're not running to a God. Mm -hmm. They're running because the door will close and be left in hell. That's yes. what they, they were told. Yes. They're not told, but sing God love you. Mm -hmm. But it's God love you so much. I don't care what you do. You're a gay, you're a drug dealer, you're a thief. No matter what you did, God just loves you. Hallelujah. That's the gospel. So when that person comes and say, God, you could love me so much. Mm -hmm. Yes, God said, yes, I love you that much. Now I look beyond whatever you do, and I love you. Whatever you did, I punish it, punish my son. For it. Whatever you will do, I already punish my son. Praise God. That's the love of God. That's what people need to hear over man of God. God's gonna keep me alive to preach this. Praise God. Because and I listen, I make it my duty as much as I can to listen to other preachers in this country. They're not preaching it, you know. <laughs> I trust God to be with you there to preach it, man of God. You know, I am thinking, is it pride? Well, it is. That's the condemnation of the devil. But it's also the, the, the ignorance, I want to say. They, they, he's covered their eyes. He's blinded them. That they don't see what Calvary really meant. Men do not understand the lostness of man. And thus the greatness of the redemption of Calvary. No, sir. They don't understand that. So they get conceited, they feel they live a certain kind of life, they feel they're better than anybody else, and so they condemn people and they run them down. A man could bring people in front of the church, they commit fornication and they step them down or read them out of the church. They, they love that. So the love of God. They don't know that. They don't care. They don't know about it. They, they, their love of God is, is, a, is a get away from hell, live right as far as people can see kind of thing, close your eyes to your own faults. That's their love of God. It's so sad. It is very sad. You know what Jesus said? He asked Peter, he said, a man who this, this amount of money and a man who this amount of money. Mm. The greater sum, the smaller sum. Both were forgiven. Who would love more? He said the one who was forgiven much. Correct. The man who thinks that he lives such a good life that he don't need much forgiveness, he can't love God. Hmm. The man who knows, but I can't even live no good life. The man could love God because he said, God, you're so gracious to me. But I think part of the problem is, is understanding, like I said, the lostness. Because for myself, I grew up in a sheltered home, yes. a good life. Yes, two. There's two of us. But when you understood sin, then you're not comparing whether a man thief, murder, rape, and you good life. We're all sinners. Yes, sir. And it's one destination. That's yes, sir. So you're feeling you're better than that man because he's an out and out sinner and this. You're a sinner. And you're condemned to die. And the only thing to redeem you is the blood of Jesus Christ. Exactly. And that is good for you or for the man who's a thief or a rapist or a murderer or gay. The same blood is good for every sinner, but only for sinners. When you don't feel you're a sinner, that's the problem. The blood's not good for you. No. You're justified by your own works. That's right. By your own works. By your own works. By your own works. My own works. You know, it grieves me. And my concern is the amount of persons that they have not heard yet that Christ died for them. My God, they have not heard it. This is what we're preaching here. People are saying, I never heard it like that. I know. I never heard it like All the years, they, they have never heard this. And they're still not hearing it. Thank God a few ministers are torn. And thank God they're scared to come out plainly and embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ. But at least some of them are listening and hearing and realizing the lies they were preaching in the name of the Lord, lying against God. My concern is lost humanity. Lost humanity. Because what the devil told them, that coming back to God means changing your life. Christ didn't die for people changing their life. Christ died and paid the price for those who can't change their life. That's correct. 
That's the power. To save them in your... That's, that's what race right. is. That's it. So, all these people, the gays, who can't help being gays, mm -hmm. who will never change from being mm -hmm. a gay, mm -hmm. Christ died for them. Yes. So if they believe they can be saved, they yes. believe Christ died for them, they are saved. They are saved. They the, are saved. That's the no. gospel. The devil said, no, 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 no. He has to change his lifestyle. Then it's not grace. Mm -hmm. He is earning it. If the man has to change, then he's earning it. It's not grace. How it can be grace if he has to earn it? It cannot be grace. Mm -hmm. It's works. It's works. It's works. Then you have to tell Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. That we are saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves, not of works. We have to change that. Tear it up. Because you have to say we are saved by works. Yes. We're not saved by works. We have to say we are saved by grace. You don't merit the favor of God. We don't merit it. So these people, we who don't merit it, God says, I'm going to save you because I believe in my son. Amen. As a matter of fact, God said, I've already saved you. Just receive it by believing. Yes. Yes. The whole human race, in essence, has been saved. Yes, through the blood of the Lord. Through the work of the cross. cross. Yes. The, it, the, it, it's applied to them the moment they believe it. The salvation applies yes. to them the moment they believe it. So, all that happened, is that the man believes that Christ died and confessed that he, Christ died for him and was raised from the dead, and that applied to him. So, okay, there's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Say, there's another one. Hallelujah. Saved. Just believe. Well, the church says, no, we have to examine your lifestyle. We have to examine them, look at them, bring them into converse class, ask them, you know, well, do you what, you, how you live? Are you, are you doing so? No, you do not so. No, and we still, well, you, do. you have to clean your life up. You see, because we can't baptize you yet. In other words, you can't get saved yet. We can't give you the salvation yet. Since when you giving anybody salvation? <laughs> I don't know. Who gives people permission to say they give you salvation? The enemy. It's a diabolic, demonic, devilish plan. We, we can't give you, you know, we, we won't be able to break bread with you because um, your life is not in order. Mm -hmm. I said, excuse me. Your life in order? <laughs> Jesus said, who's without sin? Yeah, yeah. You can't. So, so who's without sin in this church? Mark, I'd love to go somewhere and they tell me I can't break bread. <laughs> I eat out all the bread. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, some people go to church because they like the crumb they go. You go to the church, you stand up, you stand up and break bread. <laughs> Even you live in a communal relationship, let them tell you can't take it. <laughs> Stand up to take it. <laughs> oh, the love of Jesus. And let them tell you you can't break any bread. Mm. And then you come and tell me, let me deal with them. <laughs> God set me up to deal. <laughs> I don't, Bishop, this, I know why they're angry, you know. <laughs> I see some strong things. A man asked me, said, Dr. London, you can't find a nicer way, <laughs> a way to present the truth that people may offended you. And when you said the thing, I thought of it for a while. And then Spirit Lord gave me an answer. I said the greatest teacher that ever walked the earth could not find a way to present the truth. Yes. I mean, come back to the, 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 <laughs> the religious were not offended. Couldn't the, find a way. Could, if Jesus couldn't find a way, I said Jesus couldn't find a way. Mm -hmm. To speak the truth without offending them. Why you think I have to mm -hmm. find a way? Mm -hmm. Jesus couldn't find a way. Mm -hmm. No, you're, t you're saying to me, find a way? No. Mm -hmm. If Jesus could have found a way, you think they'd crucify mm -hmm. No. I... <laughs> the truth, you can't decorate truth. He <laughs> said the truth that is not truth. Mm -hmm. Beloved, I want to remind you again. And I hope some of you, I told you to do something last week. I hope you would have done it. And that is to get uh, uh, two sets of rice. I want you to do this experiment so you will know that the word of God is true, that there's death and life in the power of the tongue, the power of the tongue. And that when God has set somebody up to bless you, you know, many persons, they don't even understand because they don't understand spiritual things. When you get two sets of bread, get two little Ziploc bags, 
get some rice. Use cooked rice because that will spoil most likely faster. Put some in one bag, put some in the next bag. And then I want you to hold one bag up and say all kind of bad things to it. Tell it it's dirty, it's unclean, it's nasty, it stink, it's rotten. Say those things to one bag. You can mark them so you know which one. Say to the other bag, you are nice, you are good, you are special, you are clean, you are sweet. Just say those things to it. And leave those two bags there and see what will happen. See, there will be a difference in the two bags after a couple of days. That will be evidence that this, when you speak, something happens. Now, when you imagine you will say that and you will see that change. When a man of God speaks over your life, a man God who has called and appointed and anointed to do that, imagine what's going to happen for you. Bishop, we have a beautiful testimony. Last Wednesday, a lady came. After church, she came to see me. She said, my son was in the interior for over a year. My son is in the interior for over a year and I'm not hearing from him. She almost in tears. And I said, what is his name? She said, um, she told me his name. I'm not gonna call his name on television. And uh, I said, I'm gonna send an angel to get him, to make him call. So she said, man, I want you, only want you, I want him to come home. And I said, okay. He will call, and then he'll come home. And I, I said, look, give me an angel. Send for this man. I call his name. He said, go get him. Make him call his mother, and then bring him home. My bishop, the lady left my office and went home. By the time she got home, she called back to the office, called the secretary and said, tell his holy man, my son called. This is after a year, no call. Yes. He called. <coughs> he called twice. Mm -hmm. That's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Friday, she called back in glee. Mm -hmm. Tell him my son is home. Oh, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> praise God. Tell him yes. my son is home. What you said came surely to pass. Mm -hmm. And this is by the grace of God. Yes. This is by the grace of God. Yes. No, what gave me the boldness to do something like that? Because I know how much God loves me. I know he comes back to me. Amen, up. amen, This is why I can say to somebody, I'm going to give you a child. Because I know when I say, I want to give the person a child. I'm not a guy in a college. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> but I know when I say that, God's going to back me up. Praise God. Because I'm good? No, because he is good. Hallelujah. And he can't change. Mm -hmm. And because of his grace, he has to do it. He promises. Amen. You understand? I do. So when God gave me an instruction, that like God told me with this mustard seed, you shall remind my people of the faith pro promise. Now, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to a mountain, be moved and be cast in the sea. And nothing shall be impossible nothing for Nothing shall be impossible. The Lord told me to lay my hands on these seeds and to call them and to proclaim them to be the seeds of all possibility. Wonderful. These mustard seeds. And to every person who will sow into this ministry to help keep this program in the air and to prosper the gospel, will sow a small seed of $7,000. That's what they'll sow. They'll get these seeds. And it will be to them the seed of all possibility, possibility because I said so over Amen, this. amen, amen, amen. So that's why I told them to, you know, just in case you think that somebody can't speak, because you, you hear some uninformed pre preachers, yes, you know. Yes, Who never did anything, don't know anything. One preacher said to me, um, I don't, you can't send no angel. I said, where you get it from? I said, where did you get that from? Don't you read your Bible? That angels are called to be ministering spirits for those who are heirs of salvation. Yeah, I'm an heir of salvation. So I can send an angel. Then the lady said to me, the same lady said, you know, you remember, but about 10 years ago, I came, well, another son was in the bush and he wasn't coming home and he came and you, you, you spoke a word and two days after, or three days after he came home. I said, you said, you remember that? Is that true? She said, yes, I didn't remember it. She said, yeah. I said, well, listen, the, the same God has allowed that, he's going to allow it to go home. For me to happen. Testimony. Praise God. Every person, listen, I, ch I dare you. Get these seeds. They are the seeds of all possibility. Doors that seem to be shut and can't open, when you apply one of these seeds to that situation, doors will be open. I mean, 
all possibilities. Praise God. Things that looked impossible is going to open womb all kind of thing. Things that the doctor said is impossible will become possible because you, these seeds have an anointing, will have an anointing. They carry an anointing. And when you believe, it releases that anointing to make everything possible in your life. Beloved, I am a miracle worker. Excuse me, I'm a little different from the other preacher you know. The other preacher you know prays for things. I'm a miracle worker. So, I work miracles. This is the miracle seed of all possibility. Sow that seed. The life will never be the same after you do that and you receive these seeds. You will cherish them, you will put them up. And beloved, you will apply them wherever and you will have all things possible in your life. Now, Ants Grove will be there... Um, the dates are the 17th, 18th, and 19th, right? In Ants Grove, we'll be there at the, the what's the name of the place? Breezy Point Lounge. Breezy Point Lounge. And we're coming there with a gospel awakening, grace awakening. Man, and don't talk, the miracles will be present. The power of God will be present in that place to give you miracles. Your life is not going to be the same. Bring out your friend, your neighbor, tell everybody. Tell your pastor, come. You may not want to come, but tell him, come. Tell your preacher, come. I'm coming to Anne's Grove. The Lord has released me to come. Anne's Grove will never be the same again after I come there. Because of the grace and power of God, I will come into that place. It will never... I went to Anne's Grove one night. <laughs> and um, the same night, there's my party days. And they had a dance at the village, I think. One of my cousins came to me and said, let's go. I said, well, he said they just killed a man inside here. I looked at the man lying on dead in the village office. The night I was right there. Since then, I, was, I never went back to Ansbrook. <laughs> My Lord, let me go. Yes, yes. <laughs> man died. Yes, man died in the village of Somebody hit him, blood on him, blood. I don't know, was, I don't know who, who it was, but we left. Mm -hmm. I'm going back. God told me. Then we're going to Buxton the following week. Yes. Buxton, here we come, the week after. What are the dates? 24, 25, 26. 24, 25, 26. We'll be in Buxton at the, place. at the Nelson's place. Mm -hmm. The last time you we were in Buxton, how many persons came up? Six persons. Six persons that court cases that were dismissed same night. Same night. By one word. All six were dismissed. The power of God is present. Now I want to encourage you also to come Wednesday between 11 and 12, the hours of 11 and 12, for the miracle, the Pope's miracle blessing hour. Come, beloved. Uh, awesome things are going to happen. Awesome things, awesome things will happen when you come there. Beloved, again, I want to tell you, God loves you. He, he gave his son as a ransom for us to die for us. Please believe it. Believe that he died on the cross. Believe he was buried and rose again from the dead and you are saved. That's all, that's all. That's all. I want to invite you to come fellowship with us. Come and know more about God's provision and God's plan and God's goodness for your life. Please come and know more. And, and, let, me, and let me help to remove some of the ignorance religion put inside of your mind. Please. Until the next time, God bless you. Righteous I am by faith in Jesus. Holy I am. He's my redeemer. Righteous. Holy, justified, safe, healthy and wealthy, not by any good works, but by faith in Jesus who died for me. Righteous I am by faith in Jesus. Holy